What's up guys, JR Raymond back again, coming to you from MRB Classic Pro Shop, where Mason Brantley is the pro shop operator, and it's a wonderful place where I get to A, make some videos, and B, uh, drill a lot of my own stuff as well, and help customers and do some different things here too. But today we're gonna talk a little bit about drilling oval thumbs. I had a couple of questions from some people on how I figure out what degree uh, oval to drill and how to drill those ovals that I do in my thumbs, so stay tuned. All right, before we get going on this video about oval thumbs, please make sure to head over to patreon.com slash life traction control. And if you like everything you see here, you could always support the channel. There's a few different options there just to uh, donate or to pledge towards the channel to help out with everything that we do uh, to continue to be able to give you more information. If you want virtual lessons there, uh, I have to give you a disclaimer. It doesn't, they're not immediate. I don't get to them immediately. Uh, it does take a little bit of time, so you have to be patient on that, but we do get to them eventually and we do get it taken care of. So uh, make sure to head over to patreon.com, support the channel, uh, keep everything going there. Um, you'll be able to uh, have a couple different options. I'm gonna give you some live, or not live, but exclusive footage at some of the events that I go to. You're gonna have videos that only Patreons can see. So make sure to head over there and, uh, and, and, and subscribe over there and pledge on there as well. And make sure to head over to bowlerx.com and support that channel and that page as well uh, and the website. Uh, any of your bowling needs you need out there, make sure to head over there and get your, uh, your bowling supplies from bowlerx.com. All right, welcome back. So we're gonna try and figure out how to, first of all, find out what our oval angle is and what it needs to be. Um, but disclaimer, my way doesn't have to be the right way, okay? So if you have a different way of doing this, that's fine. Um, I'm not telling you you're wrong and I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just showing you how I do this and I'm, try I'm showing you in the most simplest form so that way it's easy to repeat and duplicate uh, so you can do it for other people as well. Um, now, the reason I do it the way that I do is because I uh, had very little success with the math portion of it. Uh, they always said that you could just do the math based on certain points of your hand to figure out what your oval was supposed to be. And every time I tried to do it that way, it actually never came out right and it felt awful to me. But when I started doing it this way, which is just real simple, uh, it came out proper because it's what I see and I can see how my, what my hand sits in the ball. Okay, so a couple ways you can do this. The, first, the one way that I'm going to show you right now, figuring it out, uh, is if you have a ball already drilled, uh, this is the way we do it. This is the easiest way. Um, if you're trying to, if it's somebody who has a circle thumb and they need to create an oval, you're going to have them um, put their fingers in the ball. You're going to draw that center line right here, okay? And then you're going to have them literally put their fingers in the ball just to the crease like they normally would. And you're going to have them put their thumb in the ball just to the first crease of the thumb. So that first bend mark right there. And all you're going to do is simply make a mark on the inside. So this part up here, you're gonna make a mark directly on the inside. And what you can do is you can take a yellow pencil and kind of mark that inside part of their thumb to make it even easier. So that way when you put their thumb in the ball, you can then look at that mark and then make a mark there. So then all you're gonna do is you're gonna take your pro suck and you're gonna line it up and you can do that on both sides. So it can be on both sides to make it easier to uh, get that, um, to, to draw this line. You only need to draw the top side up here, going towards the fingers. So you draw that oval line all the way up to give yourself a line from the thumb hole, okay? So you can see that when my fingers sit in the ball this way, the side of my thumb fits directly down that line right there, okay? So now all we're gonna do to find out what angle that's at, is so we're gonna take the center of the prosec, put it in the center of the thumb hole, line it straight up and down with the center of your span, and come over here. And then you look at the degree here, then this, uh, you can see there's degrees that go on this. And that's all you're going to do. You're going to center it up. You're going to look at this and you're going to see 45 degrees. So at a 45 degree angle, basically, is what we're going to do. Now, we're going to take a look at these charts. Now, to actually drill the oval, I don't, I don't recommend that you drill a circle there and then try to work it out at 45 degrees um, because then you're going to get an awful lot of taper. But if you're looking for that taper feel, that's fine. If you want it to be smaller at the bottom or coned a little bit, you can do that. Um, but I like the nice wide cut. I like, 
I like thumb holes to where it's ovaled enough to where you really don't feel a ton on the side. It should barely, you should barely feel the sides. It should be more feel off front to back than side to side. You need the side to side to be able to rotate and do whatever you want with your hand. Um, what happens, and the reason why I say people should be using oval thumbs, most people, not everybody needs to use an oval thumb, but most people have uh, a very flat thumb or an oval thumb. If you look at mine, it is very flat from one side to the next. So I have to use an oval thumb. If I were to drill a circle thumb based on the size front to back, which is what they always measure from, uh, or I'm sorry, from side to side, which is what they measure from, um, I'm gonna get like, I'm gonna take and find a thumb hole and sure it's gonna fit like this uh, and it's gonna get the side to side, but then I'm gonna have a ton of room front to back and I'll have to jam a bunch of tape in there, which essentially you're creating an oval by jamming tape in there anyway. So why, or uh, if you start with a fairly round thumb and then all of a sudden, the, the guy comes back into the shop or the gal comes back into the shop and says, oh, now it's getting too tight. Can you open it up? And you take a buzzer to it. Now you're opening it up the whole way. Um, and now it's getting big enough side to side, but too big front to back. And that's generally what happens. And that's where a lot of squeezing comes from in most people's bowling ball is because of that, because they open it up to fit. And now it's too big front to back, and but it's good side to side. Uh, so they were, they were getting blisters and stuff on the sides. Well, now they're getting blisters on the back because now they have to claw at it this way and put this on the back of the hole and now you're getting little blisters on the back side of the thumb. Uh, we just want to eliminate that. We want to eliminate that by creating the oval. So you're going to take the oval chart. When you drill the ball, obviously you're going to set the drill bit up directly in the center or wherever you draw your line for the thumb hole. Um, wherever that first cut is, that's going to be your span. Okay. So even though a cut is going to go higher than that line, that doesn't matter because uh, where that centerpiece hits, that first cut is going to be your span. Um, so you're going to go based on the chart that you can see here. Uh, and like for me, for the 45 degrees, I'm going to do multiple cuts at 22 and 22. Because I always use the decimals. I always use it at thousandths of an inch. Um, so that way, like my first. So my angle or my, uh, my pitch in this is a, is a quarter forward and zero left to right. So each time I'm going to be moving according to what the chart says, the ball. I'm going to be moving the ball. So horizontally, 22 degrees or 0 0.022 degrees or whatever you want to call it, 022 inches. And then I'm going to be moving it also. I'm going to move the ball down. So I'm going to be moving it up this way and cutting higher up here at the 45 degree mark, 022 um, inches as well. And I'm going to do that about, I think it's five cuts for me. So I usually do two cuts to the top, three cuts to the bottom um, to give enough room side to side. And then I'll bevel the top just a little bit and it'll be good to go. So um, finding the degree, you can do it a couple of different ways. Um, if a ball, now, now the hard part is actually finding the degree that the oval needs to be if it's somebody who's never, who doesn't already have a bowling ball. Most times you're not fitting somebody for an oval who has never bowled before. Uh, generally you're going to just, you know, you're gonna drill the ball with a circle thumb to get them used to even holding onto the ball and throwing the ball. Um, and then when they come back in and they start buying a little bit higher end equipment and they start getting better at the game, that's when you can start adjusting and making ovals. So at that point, they already have a bowling ball with finger grips in them. So then you can just have them put their fingers in, put the tip of their thumb in and measure or, or, and make the mark on the side to side. Okay. So, uh, and again, remember back you know, about the turn grips, you got to have the grips turned to here because when you set your grips in or set your fingers in, your thumb should just set in the hole because my hand is actually coming this way on the ball. So it's coming here, and then my thumb would just set in the ball here. Now if I put my fingers in up and down this way, now my hand sits this way, and now I have to move my thumb this way. So just one of those tips, make sure the finger grips are actually facing the angle of what their fingers are supposed to be, and they're not directly up and down with your center grip because you know, the grips are not a perfect circle. They're actually oval, or if you're using the lift side, they're still a little bit oval and they have that flat spot. You want the flat spot on the fingers, not on the side of the fingers. But anyway, finding that oval is pretty simple for people going this way. And this is how I do it because I can literally look at their hand and see how their hand goes from the fingers to the thumb. And I can make that mark and get it close or really, really close to creating that oval. Now, Measuring side to side, you may need to get like calipers or something to figure out the, the difference, uh, the, the, the actual measurement from side to side on their thumb. Um, or you can just take your normal tools and figure out, you know, a size where their hand just fits into it and, uh, and it actually goes in. So like this would be too tight for me 
Uh, obviously I would go size up or two. And now that would probably be a good starting point where I can just barely feel the pressure on the sides and then I can open it up as I need to a little bit side to side. So hope this helps you guys a little bit. Um, if you're somebody who has a circle thumb and you haven't drilled the oval thumb yet for yourself, make sure to at least take a look at it. Maybe if you have switch grips, you can drill another switch grip thumb and you can try and make it to where uh, you can try an oval thumb. If you don't like it, you don't like it. I'm not saying you have to have an oval thumb. I'm just saying uh, it, it's, it's helped an awful lot of people improve on these types of things or in bowling because their feel gets that much better. So go check it out. Hit your pro shop guy up or if you're a pro shop guy already and you don't have an oval thumb yourself, um, it may be something worth looking into. You never know. It could, could change your feel. Or if it's somebody who's been struggling bowling, you may just need to make that little bit of a change. You may need to make a feel change or a fit change to make things just a little bit different, to change your mental state of the game so that way you can, uh, usually when you feel something a little bit different, uh, it makes everything change and everything gets a little bit better. So hope this helps. If not, um, sorry, <laughs> but this is just how I do it. This is how I look at it. And I know it sounds dumb, stupid, um, easy to do it this way, but this is the simplest way that I see to do it. I'm not saying any other way is wrong. I'm just telling you this is how I see it. If I can see my fingers in the ball or somebody's fingers in the ball and watch them putting their thumb into the ball or at least to the tip of the ball, I can see what their oval angle is and I can make that oval based on that and that chart that you saw earlier. So anyway, uh, I'm out of here. Hope this helps. We'll see you guys later. Uh, until next time, take care.